chapter a day to keep you going to boost your faith to get you believe in God to know who you are in God what you carry what you possess the power the authority and all that God has made available for you yes you you who is listening to this you is watching this and even for me for me every single day on a chapter a day I get to learn a whole lot sometimes while I'm talking the only difference is I'm the first particular of whatever I'm telling you but we all are learning at the same time while God is speaking through me to you, he's speaking to me as well. So, let's go. The first thing we normally do on a chapter a day after singing is hand over the particular session to God. So, let's pray. Lord, we thank you for another beautiful session of a chapter a day. We pray, O oh God, that you're going to speak to us in a very special way. That you're going to reach out to each and every one of us and address those things that are in our hearts that... Only you can address and only you know about. Lord, I pray, oh God, that you meet us at our point of need and just uh, make it beautiful because you always do. And complete all that you've started in our lives and give us the grace to stay focused and stay consistent and not straight apart and remain in the place of purpose. And we know that your grace is sufficient for us to do all that we have to do. In Jesus' name I pray. Lord, Increase why I have decreased so that it's going to be you and you alone that will be seen, felt, and heard throughout this session of a chapter a day. Take glory, but now forever, Mom, because you deserve it. In Jesus' mighty and blessed name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. 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 
Okay, and right after this, what we do is the birthday people. So let's get some birthday thingies happening on here. Uh, where's our birthday book? Oh, people. Something is seemingly not right. Oh, we're going to fix it. But the book. I have to be careful so I don't hit my phone. Today is the 5th of October. And on the 5th of October, we have just one person in our birthday book. But like always, even at that, we're still going to pray for many people. So, is this pretty big sister of mine? She's called Mam Pinglo Gael. She is just amazing. She's really sweet. Very beautiful. Very smart. Very hardworking. Very, very virtuous. Oh my God. Like, what else? Big sis. I love you, Skata. You know now. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. And I wish you all the best. The best, 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 best ever that can be. That's a big sister that God gave to me. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't have asked for a better big sister, but God decided to give me that one. And I'm very grateful that he gave that one to me. And she's really, really amazing. So please, you all should join me and wish you a happy birthday and say a prayer for her as well. That will be very good. So let's go. She's the only one who is for 5th of October. So... We're going to pray for her and pray for everybody who was born on this fifth day of October. Are you ready? Ready or not, here I come. Lord God, we thank you for all these amazing people who are born today. Use your daughter, Mam Gail, as point of contact to meet and answer the prayers and the desires of everyone who is born on this fifth day of May. Lord, we use that as point of contact to pray for everyone who was born on this day. Lord, we pray, oh God, that you're going to open the windows of heaven upon their lives, rebuke every devourer in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray that you're going to shine the light, shine your light upon their lives, that they'll be able to see the path which you desire them to walk on and they'll fulfill purpose to the glory of your name, oh God. Father, that they're going to know that which they were called or created to be solutions to here on earth. And they're going to put their all to it. And they're going to do it beautifully, just like you ordained and prepared before they were even brought to earth, oh God. Father, I pray, oh God, that you're going to bless them beyond all reasonable doubts, that there'll be a blessing in their generation and beyond. Lord, that the blessings is going to encompass them round about as a shield and no weapon form of fashion against them shall be able to prosper in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray that they're going to increase in wisdom and stature, gaining favor before God and before men, clothe them with a the garment of honor, praise, and glory. Father, I pray that money is going to meet money in their pockets, blessings meet blessings in their lives, favor meets favor in their lives, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I pray, O oh God, that you perfect all that concerns them in the mighty name of Jesus. Cause their helpers to move from east, west, north, and south and come to do that which they are ordained and purposed to do in their lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, let them be a blessing. Let them be an overflowing in the mighty name of Jesus. Cause them to be trailblazers, pace setters, and wall changers in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray that you also open their eyes and enlighten them to be able to see those whom they are supposed to be destiny helpers to, those whom they are supposed to be answered to their prayers in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, that they're never going to ha lack help. Whenever they need help, help is going to come forth from all the ends of the earth, O oh God. Father, I pray, O oh God, that you're going to cause them to bring manifestations of your glory upon the earth. And the groaning nation will see your children manifesting to the glory of your name. In Jesus' mighty and blessed name, we pray with thanksgiving. Lord, I thank you because I know you're faithful. Write beautiful stories on the pages of their lives, O oh God even as they get on this day in the mighty name of Jesus. Give them wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Give them strategies to be able to do the things they have to do. Lord, when they get to the point where they're overwhelmed, they're tired, they're exhausted, they're about to give up, Lord, they're going to hear a clear voice right behind them saying, this is the way they should walk down in it, O Lord. Father, help them not to do the things that you don't want them to do and to do the things you want them to do. Write beautiful stories on the pages of their lives and perfect all that concerns them, O Lord. Give them a sound 126 states that every single time is going to be a season of laughter, dancing, and singing, and glorifying your name because you're not going to stop doing good. It's going to be from good to good to good to best. Lord, thank you because I know you're in control. Take all the glory, but now forevermore. 
bless your children tremendously let them be able to go and conquer their world in jesus name amen amen people amen hallelujah okay so now we're going straight up to the bible party i think today is genesis chapter 16 um phone went out <laughs> so we have to get it back on um while we're waiting for that what should we be doing we can be singing oh yeah so i spoke about i spoke with a friend of mine today a friend of mine she's quite an encourager and she's really awesome still on the matter of yesterday so i was feeling bad yesterday and i said my dad actually gave me a pep talk and that's what boosted me and helped me to come on a chapter a day because i was already feeling like i was not going to be able to do a chapter a day because of the mood i was in i guess i should just learn knowing that nothing is going to stop me from doing a chapter a day and sometimes when i feel like i wouldn't do it i end up doing it and the days i end up doing it like that is really beautiful and i feel peace as well so i had to talk to my friend because Normally we pray together and as much as I talk to other people, I also want a praying person to be abreast with whatever is going on so that um, we can get it right. So I spoke to her about it and then she was telling me that it's just almost the same thing that is happening to her. And what she has learned is that whenever anybody tells her anything, she goes and asks the next person. So if it's something about two people, one person comes and reports their side of the story. Also listen to the other person's side of the story. Don't just... Um, conclude but the funny thing is that the Bible has already said it that there is always a tendency to take sides with the person who came and reported first even if they're wrong you know until the next person comes there's always that tendency that you just be like you just side with the first person who came and reported the matter which shouldn't always be so I like the way my dad used to um, res resolve conflicts so um, before he noticed that some people would just come and report a matter and they'll be so you know how someone will fix it to their favor right the first person who's coming to report will just fix it to their favor and stuff like that so my dad had already understood that so what he what he used to do was he'll make you he'll allow you to talk you talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and he'll listen and he's very keen to details you talk and talk and talk when you finish you say okay you he'll let you go he'll now call the other person who call the next person and tell the person that um the person should explain what happened and the person will explain to him just him alone and then when he has done that they all think they've done their best or they've done their worst he will just sit one other day and bring both of them together and say please say what you said to me and you say what you said to me so when they finish so people started noticing that the things was clashing you know, you just think you're coming to talk only to the pastor. So when you talk to the pastor, he fix it to suit you. And then when they bring both of you now, you know, like you're still scared. In front of the pastor, you're feeling like you don't want to lie. So you have to say everything that you said and everything. And some of the things are not true. So when people started noticing that that's exactly what he was doing, they stopped going to report their problems to him. So can you see? Some people basically don't want the problem to be solved. Or some people just do some of those things to make some people look as bad people meanwhile they're not so when you hear things from somebody about another person verify with the person verify with, with both persons not just one verify with two people don't verify just one person okay so um it's on now today welcome mr jimmy hands welcome 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 that's my kid brother and my father <laughs> Keep brother and father. Interesting, right? Mm -hmm. So let's go. Let's get to find this out. This is Genesis. And we're reading Genesis chapter 16 today. And Genesis chapter 16 has 16 verses. Interesting. That's going to be a short read. Okay. Genesis chapter 16 is still loading. I just can't give up now. So that's a hard lesson. When you hear from one person, hear from the next person too. Don't just hear from one person and get a conclusion. 
and sometimes it's really tricky because we're out here we don't know what's happening on ground so anybody can be giving anything that they want to say and it might not even be true and that's why i also need the spirit of discernment to be able to discern when people are talking to you let the holy spirit help you to be able to discern whether the person is being sincere or the person is just wanting to to overshoot things or over exaggerate things and all that so we need the spirit of discernment okay so let's get ready genesis chapter 16 ready or not here i come genesis chapter 16 now sarah abraham's wife bare him no children and she had an handmaid an egyptian whose name was hagar and sarai said unto abraham Behold, now the Lord had restrained me from bearing. I pray thee, go in unto my maid. It may be that I might obtain children by her. And Abraham hearkened to the voice of Sarai. And Sarai, Abraham's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, after Abraham had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan, and gave her to her husband Abraham to be his wife. And he went on, and he went into. And he went in unto Hagar, and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress was despised in her eyes. And Sarai said unto Abraham, My wrong be upon thee. I have given my maid into thy bosom. And when she saw that she had conceived, I was despised in her eyes. The Lord judged between me and thee. And Abraham said unto Sarai, Behold, thy maid is in thy hand, do to her as it pleaseth thee. And when Sarai dealt hardly with her, she fled from her face. And the angel of the Lord found her by a fountain of water in the wilderness, by the fountain in the way to Shur. And he said, Hagar, Sarai's maid, whence camest thou, and whither wilt thou go? And she said, I flee from the face of my mistress, Sarai. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Return to thy mistress, and submit thyself under her hands. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, I'll multiply thy seed exceedingly, that it shall not be numbered for multitude. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art the child, and shall bear a son, and shall call his name Ishmael because the lord had heard thy affliction and he will be a wild man his hand will be against every man and every man's hand against him and he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren and she called the name of the lord that spake unto her thou god seest me for she said have i also here looked after him that seeth me wherefore the well was called Bella Hiroi, Bella Hiroi. Behold, it is between Kadesh and Bered. And Hagar bare Abraham a son, and Abraham called his son's name, which Hagar bare, Ishmael. And Abraham was fourscore and six hundred years old when Hagar bare Ishmael to Abraham. Okie dokie. This is interesting. This is interesting. So, let's get to the start. Mm. Blaming people for what we do didn't start just in this life or in this world or on earth. It started even in the Garden of Eden. So it's not news. How do you get yourself out of the whole scenario when you don't fall for what people are saying? So this is Sarah. She has sat and decided by herself. She thought to herself, oh, she wants to look for a way to make her husband to, you know, there are some times in our life we want to help God. We think we can help God to do what he wants to do in our lives. So maybe God makes a promise to you and then you have your own particular ways that you want it to get done. And so you start trying to help God. So this is Sarah. Sarah is looking at his husband, looking at herself 
and saying things like, I can't bear children. I'm, I'm, I'm past the age. I'm above menopause. Abraham wasn't getting any younger. You know, he himself, he, they said he was 86 years when he finally actually um, gave birth to Ishmael. When Ishmael was brought in, on the earth, he was 86 years old. So just imagine, he's thinking, that team is 86. <laughs> nothing is happening so sarah was looking at him and nothing is happening and she was of age herself so she was imagining that nothing was going to happen she wasn't going to be able to bear children but god had spoken that's the thing when god speaks a word trust on god's word he he has the ability to break nature to break normal things for your sake if god could hold the son for gideon or was it joshua or gideon god held the son which was supposed to distort the whole world because the sun rotates in an orbit, right? But he held the sun just for one of his seven sakes after he prayed, just so his battle should get won. God distorts nature for one person. You gotta be kidding me. What would he not do? He sent his only begotten son to come on earth and die for your sakes and mine. What else will be, big, will be bigger than that? What? What can be bigger than that? Nothing. Nothing. So if God says that he's going to do this thing in your life, you, my brother, my sister, you need to believe God. You need to believe God. Don't fall into the pressures of wanting to do things the way the world thinks it. The way the world sees it. I've heard of a lot of people starting to ask, especially young ladies who are Christian who are getting older, they're not married yet and everything, and they keep asking about IVFs. If you so badly want to take care of a child, why not just go to, the, to an orphanage? It's selfish. It's selfish. So when the child grows up and starts asking, who is my dad? Where's my dad? What are you supposed to tell them? It's selfish. You're thinking just about yourself right now. You're not thinking about the child. But it's going to affect the child psychologically. Some people say, oh, so what about people who their husbands died? That's a different game. That's a different ball game entirely. So are you going to lie to the child that their father died? No. Let's stop being selfish. And you don't want to wait on God. You don't want to trust God. I saw a video sometime yesterday or two days ago. A lady who was 57 years old and she got married. She got married. There is a proper procedure for giving birth to children. I would understand for married people. But you as a single lady, please stop that. Stop it. So badly want to take care of kids. Just find one that is already on earth and is already going through so much. Rather than bringing some into the world, and then they end up getting confused and getting all distorted and getting all irritated and getting all... I don't know. It's not right. So Sarah decided that she wanted to help God. And she's like, oh, I'm getting past menopause. So I'm not going to be able to give birth to a child again. That was Abraham before we read a previous chapter where Abraham was thinking and saying, oh, nothing is going to happen. It's Eliza who is going to be his um, hair and everything and God says it's not a laser it's going to come out from your loins Abraham should have known better than listening to Sarah if she was going to cry she was not going to cry blood he knew exactly what God had told him so sometimes we get ourselves into trouble because we're trying to listen to people and sometimes we say oh I love the person if I don't do it the person might do this or the person might do that nobody has ever died because you love them and they wanted you to do a wrong thing and you didn't do that wrong thing. Nobody ever died. If they died for that same reason, then it's good. It's a good thing. You're not going to hurt God because you want to please a human being. God was just from reassuring Abraham that he's going to have children from his own loins. So he's thinking, if he's the one who impregnates Hagar, then probably that makes sense. Can you imagine that? Ah. so his faith could carry him to the level of where his wife was taking him so his wife says oh me I'm of age I have a, a, a maid 
So just get into our maid. That maybe that's what God is saying. How you're going to get children and everything. And Abraham was like, okay, but this is this is my lunch, right? So God told me that it was going to be my lunch. My darling dear, you need to be sensitive. You need to have a personal, personal, personal relationship with God. So much so that you will not be deceived by the foolishness. You will not be deceived by something that looks like what God said, which is not what God said. There are some times we hear ourselves. There are some times because we've so meditated on the issues, on the problems, that we hear ourselves and then we begin to convince ourselves that God is speaking to us. No. It wasn't God who told Sarah to take the, um, the maid and give to Abraham. It wasn't God who said, the loins he was talking about had to be through Ega. He was his wife. He was supposed to have been his wife. He was supposed to know, like know that he was supposed to be his wife. But hey, what happened, happened. And so he now gave Hagar to, to Abraham. And Abraham took, him at, took her and she got pregnant. You see the funny thing? Sometimes. We want something so badly. We desperately want this thing and God is not giving it to us. And then someone makes one flip, just the boop, one mistake and it's crazy. <laughs> oh my God. One, just that one time and you're, and there is a woman that has been waiting on God for like forever and she's qualified she's married she has a husband and everything and then she can have kids and then you're like what is going on and then this girl is just going and playing life and chopping life and whatever and she just boom she gets pregnant some of them get give birth to twins some give birth to triplets and i'm like god but why <sighs> well they say um children are a gift from god we can't complain so um, that's what happened. So now Abraham give, um, Sarah gives the maid to Abraham and boom, she gets pregnant. And then when she gets pregnant, she starts despising Sarah. Can you imagine? Anyways, that's pride. And that's, pride has its things that it does to us. It, it, it makes us lose some things that we're supposed to get. Imagine those number of days that she suffered. And she had to go right to the wilderness. Why? Just because she was not submissive. Learn how to be submissive. Sometimes we, we, we become arrogant. When we have something. That's when we have a blessing that we're not ready for. That we're not prepared for. That God has not prepared you for that kind of blessing. Or for that kind of miracle. When it comes. There's a tendency of you actually messing up. Or doing stupid things. You are humble, you are handmaiden, you are maid servant, and you are very humble, probably doing your work and doing everything right. So they see that, oh, you're the right candidate. And then finally, now you come and start feeling like madame of the house. And then you become proud, you become arrogant. You know, that's what she started doing to, 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 to Sarah. And I like the way Abraham just dished it onto her do with her what you want it's your maid abby you're the one who gave her to me she's not pregnant she's despising you it's only you who knows how to deal with her so deal with her the way you want as for me my hand is not there <laughs> it's like take responsibility for what you started and then she was trying to like push it on to to to, to abraham and let god judge between d and me like how was abraham supposed to have been involved you're the one who brought the maid now the maid is acting up with you do with her the way you please it has nothing to do with me abraham my power is to get her pregnant for your sakes because you said probably that's what god wants and she's not pregnant you're telling me what should i do i should make her i should unpregnant her <laughs> if there's any word like that so I'll use this um, pregnancy thing with us being children of god and wanting stuff from god so when we desire some things from god maybe a job or promotion a career or something will be so connected to god and we'll be all happy we'll be all excited and then boom god gives it to us we start becoming proud like we're feeling like everybody's supposed to walk under our feet we're everybody's supposed to be under us and then we walk on them we're feeling like 
we're too big people can't relate with us anymore we can't connect with people some people will look down on some people that's exactly how it happens it's so sad this is me connecting and relating this to our practical daily life with what was happening between Sarah and 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 Hagar you're that humble person you're serving God you know and everything and then now God gives you that thing that you've been crying out for and then all of a sudden you become proud see why they say the Bible says that it's gonna be hard for a rich man to get into heaven because when you get those things sometimes basically you are you are you are having time for God and time with God because you seemingly didn't have time. You, you seemingly didn't have anything to do. So now that you have something to do, instead of trying to negotiate your time and trying to fix your time so that you still get time for God while you get time for those things that he gives you, you shift all your focus to those things that God gave you. My dear, there is a possibility that when those things finish, which they do because they're just gifts, you would want to come back to the giver and you just might not have an opportunity to come back. And so sometimes people become proud, people become arrogant. People don't do the things they used to do before. They don't come to God no more. They don't pray no more. They don't go to church no more. When you want to ask them, they're like, I'm busy, I'm busy. Really? Really? God will not give you a job that will make you too busy for him. God doesn't do that. You have to create time just as much as you are creating time before. Even in your less busy schedule, just as much as you are creating time, you have to create time for God. And sometimes we we'll we'll become too lax and then we're feeling like, oh no, we don't want to hurt our bosses and the people here. But it feels like we can hurt God. That's bad. That's bad. Because if you get a job, it's God who has given you the job. You're supposed to stay to there. You're supposed to tell them, I don't work on, Saturday, on Sundays. You might work on Saturdays, that's up to you. But I don't work on Sundays because I have to go to church to serve God. But some people will be like, hmm, I'm just a new person here. If I start saying that now, maybe they will not even give me the job opportunity. If I start doing that now, maybe I'll even lose my job or something. No, you have to make your stand. You don't have to compromise your faith. You don't have to compromise your relationship with God for nothing in this world. Nothing at all. I mean like nothing, nothing at all. It's what you compromising your faith for nothing. I mean like totally nothing. Absolutely nothing. So they sent her away and God has a way of still blessing people regardless, even in their mistakes. Kind of fix the mistakes. But you see what he said to her? He says, go back. Go back and submit yourself to her. That was the right thing to do. When God gives you those things, still stay connected to him because he's the source. If you disconnect from the source, the things that the gifts that you're going to get are going to get depleted somehow. And when they're depleted, you need more. You have to be consistently connected to the source. It's not a part-time thing. And she came back and uh, she submitted herself. So you saw there was no problem anymore. But one thing that happened was that um, when God met her, God addressed the problem and told her it's because she's not submissive, that's why. So she go back and submit and see what will happen. She went back, she submitted and see what happened. So you don't want to get to that place where you have to be treated so bad, so you have to be fleeing and then you'll be in the wilderness situation before God is telling you to come back and come and submit. I really don't want to be in that place. I always pray this prayer that God should open my eyes and enlighten the eyes of my understanding to see here, understand him perfectly and clearly and obey him promptly. I don't want to get to that place. I don't want to get to the Jonah experience kind of level where I have to stay three days in the belly of a fish as opposed to just doing what I have to do, which I know. Jonah knew exactly what he had to do. He had to go to Nineveh to preach the word of God, but he didn't want to do it. And so he had to stay three days in the belly of a fish. I don't want to. Hagar knew that she was supposed to have been submissive. She knew. She has been a servant before. So it was not because her status had changed now. She wanted to start acting up. No. And that's why they say that true, true test of character is somebody's character is truly tested when they're under pressure or when they get money or when they get wealthy. 
you see the way they behave with people the way they relate to people then you know their true character because some people are just not humble My, um, and poverty humble them so when they become rich you realize that they are set of arrogant people so she had been a mistress she had been a, 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 a maid before so she knows to have known that she's supposed to be submissive regardless that her status changed from being a um, maid to wife didn't make her any bigger than Sarah. To begin with, Sarah was probably bigger than her normally on a normal basis. Sarah was probably older than her and builder than her, and bigger than her. So just for that, she needed to respect Sarah regardless of whether she had become a co-wife. She had to be respectful, but she wasn't. So when, when God met her, God was not just going to send her back because she had, um, she had a child for Abraham. No, he was not just going to do that. He was supposed to address the problem and fix the problem before sending her back. And she said, go back and submit yourself to her. And she went back, submitted herself, and things went better, I guess, for a while. And so... Um, God was telling her how the man was going to be, how the child was going to be. And some of these people, because they don't know God, today if God is telling me that my, my child is going to be like this, I'm going to cry out to him until he changes that particular verdict. Right? Because it, it doesn't seem good to me. It doesn't sound good to me. So you see what permissive wills always get to bring us? It might bring us something that looks a little bit good, but... It's not good in itself. It's not good in itself. It has a lot of loopholes. See Ishmael. You know the generation of Ishmael right now, right? We all know. And we know what's happening in the world because of this set of people. That was a permissive will. I would say mistake. That was an error on the part of Sarah and Abraham. And it brought us a whole lot of issues on earth. So... Let's always desire and go for God's perfect will. Let's not go for his permissive will. There's some things that he permits when you've over insisted and over over insisted. He lets you do it. He lets you have your way. And when you have your way now, when there's trouble, you still start calling on God. But God, why? But God, why? But why? Like, what did you expect him to do? What did you expect him to do? So let's learn. Let's learn our lessons from, from this. Lord, I pray. That every time that you give me riches, every time that you increase me, every time that you upgrade my status, Lord, I should remain humble. I should remain um, your child. I should not become arrogant. Lord, just keep me humble forever, forever and ever and ever in Jesus' name. <laughs> so, yes, let's do the things that God wants us to do. Let's, let's pray that God grants us the spirit of discernment. So we can be able to discern when it's him speaking and when it's just us speaking. So we don't get ourselves into trouble and we don't get his permissive will that come with consequences. Ishmael came with consequences. That was Sarah already fighting and getting angry and getting irritated. If there was no um, um, Hagar scenario with the husband, there would have been no need for them to be fighting. Sometimes we're the ones who carry ourselves and bring trouble upon our lives. And then after that, we start blaming God for it. God, why? But why? Really? Okay, so it has been a beautiful one. Tomorrow is Genesis chapter 17. Let's come again same time and we'll have fun together. I always get to say I love you so very much, but God loves you way, way more. Get to like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you get all our updates each time we upload a new video or we get to go live. Until tomorrow. Ciao, ciao. Oh, yeah, we've not prayed yet. Lord, we thank you for your word. We pray that your word will be engrafted on the fleshy tables of our hearts. And we're going to be able to be doers of the words, not hearers only. Father, I pray, O oh God, that this word is going to help us, O oh God, to pray and trust you and stay connected to you with the source. That we're not going to remove our focus from you, the source, to the resources but lord we're going to stay focused on you because it's through you that we get all the resources that we need lord keep guiding us 
Grant us a spirit of discernment to be able to know that which you want us to do and when and how and with who or with whom, oh God, you want us to do these things with. Take all the glory but now and forevermore. In Jesus' mighty and blessed name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Mr. Hans Jimmy, we thank God for the teaching and we all are learning. Until tomorrow. Ciao, ciao.